The Joseph Business School has been training entrepreneurs for over 20 years and has turned out business leaders all over the world. This is a world-class business school that will lay out the roadmap for your business success and teach you how to thrive during any economy. 2020 was a challenging year for many people, but it doesn't matter where you find yourself right now. You have an idea. Our goal is to help you take your idea, develop it, and help change the world. It's time for you to dream bigger. We specialize in helping you to see, dream, and think bigger. JBS has helped entrepreneurs take their businesses from local to global markets, from net profits of thousands to multi-millions. Now is the time. JBS is the place. You have what it takes. Don't let anything stand in your way. Whatever your vision, we can help you get there. JBS graduates perform two and a half to four times better than the average business. Joseph Business School, the place where dreams come true. Enroll today at jbs.edu. The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. Up next on the Believer's Walk of Faith. Folks, it ain't about going to heaven. It's about bringing heaven down to earth. The enemy's trying to keep you contained, keep you from even thinking like God thinks. He said, your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your ways are not my way. Well, all of that is over. From now on, from this conference, you won't think like God. Hello, I'm Bill Winston, and welcome to the Believer's Walk of Faith, where we walk by faith and not by sight. Well, today's message is an excerpt from our previous International Faith Conference, which we have every year. Now, there is no expiration date on your dreams. Some people have dreams have never come to pass. Let's ignite those dreams again, or shall I say, reignite those dreams and get you to that wealthy place. Praise God. Let's go right into today's teaching. Now, this is entitled Faith for the Last Days. Let's go into it. You and I have been called by God for these last days. So God knows what you have in you. And you have to see yourself like God sees you. And one of the things that God sees you is he sees you in his class. Say amen to that. He does not see you poor does not see you inferior, come on, does not see you without value. God sees you in his class. And all that God has and all that God is, he has given to you. I mean, you have his DNA. That's if you've been born again. If you've been born again, you have his DNA. You have uh, his gifts. You have his wisdom. You, you have the Zoe kind of life. You have his power. You, you already have his riches. You already rich. You not trying to get rich. You already rich. Say amen to that. And I'm just saying that everything that God has, he passed on to us. And the deception of the devil was just like with Eve. He tried to tell Eve, you don't have something yet. But I'm here to tell you, you've got it all. And when God made you, he broke the mold. And you are born for dominion. You are born to expose who he really is. And when people see you, they should be in awe of you. Say amen to that. Uh, in fact, there are no more limits on your life. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can even ask, come on, or think. You are special with God. You are the cream of the crop. You are pure and holy. I'm saying you have a right to expect the best everywhere you go and everything you do. Stop trying to get cheap stuff. Ain't nothing about God that's cheap. I'm saying God 
God made you for the supernatural. He made you for the impossible. He, he, there is nothing too hard for God, so there's nothing too hard for you. Because you and God are not two, you are one. In these last days, you're going to walk like God. You're going to talk like God. You're going to think like God. You're going to believe like God. You're going to act like God. And whatever God has, you're going to have it too. Now, you need to make up your mind at this conference that you about to do something nobody else has done. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm saying God made you for success. Success, over to God, is never final and failure is never fatal. I'm here to tell you right now that there's no expiration date on your dream. If it didn't come to pass last year, don't give up hope because God's got something in you he's going to work out in the last days. So what am I saying to you? I'm saying that God has got potential inside of you. And that potential is hidden abilities that God has in you. And sometimes you have to challenge that potential. And Peter did. When Peter in Matthew chapter 14 and Jesus came walking on the water, Peter said, if that be you, bid me to walk on the water. You see, he didn't say, call me swimming to you or come and do whatever have you. Peter wanted to do just like Jesus. And I'm here to tell you right now, Jesus was your sample son. He was the one that shows you how you are supposed to be active. Say amen to that. So I'm saying that the church has not been functioning where God has wanted us to function. Now, to get to the supernatural, we're going to have to preach the supernatural. And sometimes folks hate to do that. They think it's extreme. They think it's a little bit going too far. Let me tell you, my friends, we haven't gone far enough. I said, we haven't gone far enough. God has something inside of you that he wants exposed. And this seminar, this meeting, this convention is designed to get whoever you are that's been hiding, get you out in the open. Now, this time is a time, as I said, of heaven on earth. It's a time that we're going to really have a time to see what heaven is really like because the Holy Spirit's job is to paint a picture to us and to give us, uh, 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 excite our imaginations with what is possible. Now, of course, you got an enemy out there, the devil, and he doesn't want you to go anywhere. As a matter of fact, he doesn't want you to say anything and move outside of the place of containment that he is trying to hold us. But I got a feeling somebody's about to break out. You, you see, <laughs> that's what Jesus did because it seemed like the leadership were holding the people. And God, Jesus had to attack the leadership. He, he had to come against them because I, I don't think they did it purposely. They just didn't know that they had shrunk down to that kind of level. You see, the enemy works on containment. He couldn't stop you from getting saved, but he's trying to stop you from making $25,000 a month. I'm talking to somebody now. See, I'm not trying to get you to get something that belongs to somebody else. I'm trying to get you to get something that belongs to you. Now, that 25000 was low. You haven't even seen the enormous riches and blessings that he has for every one of you. And see, the enemy tried to keep you from revelation because revelation will give you a glimpse of what's already there. Say amen to that. God 
God has made you rich beyond your wildest imagination. You can't even think. Now, he doesn't have it all for you because it's not all for you. What he wants you to do is bring heaven to earth. He wants you to go into Detroit and buy the houses and give it to the people. He, he, come on now. See, when a city cries bankrupt, you should say, I'm on my way. cries famine, you should say, hey, get me a ticket. No, no, excuse me. Get my jet ready. Let's go over there. See, we got to stop talking down here if we want to go up there. Folks, it ain't about going to heaven. It's about bringing heaven down to earth. The enemy's trying to keep you contained, keep you from even thinking like God thinks. He said, your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your ways are not my way. Well, all of that is over. From now on, from this conference, you're going to think like God. See, if you think like God, then you're going to go somewhere the other folk can't go. You're going to do something other people can't do. God's got big plans for you. Uh, no, you didn't hear me. God's got big plans for you. No, you're not renting office space in the building. You are buying the building and renting office space to other people. Now, if you come around me, I'm going to talk big. And they didn't like David for talking like that. He said, wait a minute, I slayed a lion, I slayed a bear, and I can take this big guy too. They said, wait a minute, he's been trained in war from his youth. David said, wait a minute, he said, I haven't tried on this stuff, take this back, I got you covered. See, David's sword was in his mouth. I'm telling you, your sword is in your mouth. And if you just start speaking some things, God can start doing some things. Folks, you should get in your car and start driving around and seeing what all belongs to you. Just drive, that's mine. That's mine. Come on, that's mine. Come on, get crazy for Jesus. Stop trying to be so pretty. You better take that stuff off and say, hey, that's mine. And I want it now. Sit down. Satan's job is to contain you. And he's built a counterfeit system and society. And what he's trying to do is teach people to live without God. And what is happening without God is things are getting worse. Why? Because the whole earth is groaning, waiting, come on, for the manifestation of the sons of God. You and I are the only ones that can really fix this. So I'm saying for you now, why don't you, when you get in the Word of God, ask the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, show me what this really means. See, don't go by your traditional thinking anymore. Just ask him to show you and take you as far out there as he wants to take you. And get, start praising God about it. I came to speak some things. I'm speaking into the atmosphere. You don't let this uh, counterfeit society tell you who you are and what you can do and what you can have. The standards of the world don't have anything to do with you. You from another place. You like Superman. You got to say some stuff and you got to say it and, and not care 
what they think about it. We got to say some stuff. It's, it's easy in here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But go out there where they shoot. <laughs> Am I right about it? Yeah. Folks, we about to call some things here now. See, I, I've been preaching some things about ownership. Because, see, that, that Satan, Satan w w tempted Jesus and he took him to this mountain over in Luke chapter 4. He said, now, the devil took him up to a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. He's tempting Jesus. And the devil said to him, all this power will I give you in the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will give it. See, somebody said, well, he really didn't tempt Jesus because he really didn't have, yes, he did. That was the temptation. That's why they put it in the Bible. It wasn't a temptation. They wouldn't have said it was a temptation. If thou wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Then Jesus said to him, get thee behind me, Satan. Now, you know what that was. So my point to you is, is that Adam, through sin, gave this thing over to Satan. Now, Satan's got it and running it. Jesus came to get it back. I said, Jesus came to get it back. Now, what he did is he stripped Satan of it. He, Colossians chapter 2 and verse 15, and look what it says about it. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Now, notice spoil. The word spoil means to strip. It means to take everything. Have you ever seen a plucked chicken? Y'all never seen one over here. Maybe some people over here have seen one. But my point to you is, he stripped him of everything he had. So now Satan doesn't have anything. He's now lying to everybody. He owns nothing anymore. He has nothing. He just lying. He just acting like he has something, but he don't have nothing. He just boasting like he got to, but he don't have anything. Are y'all following what I'm saying? So look at Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1. God, who at sundry times and diverse manners it spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Watch this now. Watch this. Hath in these last days spoken unto who? Us by his who? Son. Now what is he speaking? He's speaking the same thing that happened to Adam. He told Adam, he blessed him, said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it. Yeah. Replenish means when it starts breaking up, fix it. Amen. Say amen to that. Amen. When a part gets worn out, replace it. Yeah. And I'm telling you folks what's going to happen in the last day, that parts of our bodies, when we speak it, it's going to be replaced. I'm telling you now. We're about to see the supernatural on another level, folks. See, uh, Lord have mercy. Uh, look, let's keep looking at. Let's look at that. So, it, look what he said in verse two. And hath in these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir, what, of all things, by whom he also made the world. What is an heir, somebody? What is an heir? What is an heir? Somebody that what? Has inherited something. So Jesus inherited something. What did he inherit? All things. Everything there is, he got it back. Everything that is in this earth, Jesus got it back. But he didn't get it back for him. He got it back for you. Let's go to Romans then. And Romans chapter 8 and verse 16. And look and see who he got it back for. Glory to God. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Are you a child of God? Yes. Look at the next verse. And if children, then, then heirs, heirs of who? God and joint heir with Christ. So whatever he got back, come on. Come on, whatever he got back, come on, he got the land back, 
You got the land. Come on now. He got the houses back. Come on. You got the houses. Come on. He got whatever it is that's a thing, he got it back. So Satan doesn't own anything and his counterfeit system is a counterfeit. Say amen to that. There's really only one title. Now let me show you who got the title. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, please. And 11 verse 1, he says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, let's look at that in the Amplified Translation and see what it says. He said this, Now faith is the assurance, keep going, the confirmation, come on, the title D. Faith is the what? Title D. So whoever has the faith got the title. Whoever, come on now. I know it looked like Joe got the title, but if I got faith, I got the title. Are y'all following what I'm saying here? So faith is the title D of the things we hope for being what? Proof of things we do not see. So for God to deliver what's yours back into your hands, he's going to have to see some proof. So you just show God proof. And when you show God proof, he gets involved in taking it from where it is now and transferring it into your hands. Come on now. See, some of y'all say, well, I don't have no money. The Bible didn't say nothing about money. Look what it says in Mark chapter 11 and verse 24. Ain't no money in there. There is no money in there. Look what it says. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you have enough money to pay for it, and you shall have it. This scripture is based on ownership. Folks, I know this is too good to be true. Now, that doesn't mean you show up and tell somebody and take some, hey, my name is Jimmy. I take all you give me. That is not the attitude of a believer. What you're going to do, if there's anything good about it, if there's anything that's needed to get you the kingdom advance in this earth, if there's anything that you need about it, then you have a right to it. Yeah. I don't care who's living on it. He, now, I know this sound, some of y'all, oh, Lord, he's gone too far. I haven't gone far enough. I'm, I'm going to tell you. The devil going to give my stuff up. The devil tried to hold this shopping mall. He couldn't hold it because I showed God proof. <laughs> look, look at Joshua chapter 6. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given, not going to give. I said, not going to give. It's already done. I have given into your hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. Somebody was living on it, but it belongs to God's people. He told Joshua, this is Joshua chapter one, verse three. He said, every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon that have I given you. As I said unto Moses, watch this. From the wilderness of this Lebanon, even to the great river, the river Euphrates, and all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. Next verse. And there shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. I will not what? Fail you or forsake you. Now let's just see how he's with Moses real quick. Let's go to Exodus in chapter 23. Just see how was he with Moses. Behold, Moses, I'm going to send an angel before you. 
to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place that I prepared. Watch this. Beware of him now and obey his voice. Don't provoke him because he won't pardon your transgressions for my name is in him. Next verse. But if you shall indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I'm going to be an enemy to your enemies. I'm going to be an adversary to your adversaries. Keep going. For my angels shall go before you and bring you into the Amorites. Come on. The Hittites, come on, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, and what I'm going to do with them? I'm going to cut them off. Your days for fighting your own battles are over. You're going to speak some things right now. So I'm saying to you now that God has big plans in store for you. No longer are you going to just allow tradition to tell you what to think. Now the Holy Ghost is going to tell you what to think. And get ready, get ready, get ready. Because he thinks big. Well, I trust that you were blessed by that powerful message. Now, here's a point you want to remember. It comes out of Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 2. It says this, Hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Here's what Charles B. Williams' translation says, Jesus Christ is the lawful owner of everything. Praise God. Well, if he's the lawful owner of everything and we are joint heirs with him, glory to God, it's time for some ownership. You follow what I'm saying? A lot of times, I know we're renting and leasing and all of that. Whoa, what about ownership? It's our time now. Hey, praise God. Well, this is Bill Winston saying, until next time, we love you and keep walking by faith. To order today's single teaching, Faith for the Last Days, on CD or MP3, or DVD or MP4, call 1-800-711-9327, or go online at billwinston.org today and request product number 348BW. In these last days, faith is not an option, but it is required for believers to receive what God has planned for their lives. Order this teaching today and build your faith for the last days. Doctors Bill and Veronica Winston are dedicated to seeing lives changed through the power of prayer. Our loving and highly trained prayer ministers are ready to pray and agree with you. We know that prayer can turn around any situation in your life. We want to thank our partners who have made this prayer call center possible. If you are not a partner, we encourage you to pray about joining us in partnership and be a part of the wonderful work that God is doing through this ministry. The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. Now remember, you need faith to get to your destiny. So don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our videos. This is Bill Winston. I love you and keep walking by faith.